GitHub is opening the public beta for sub-issues, which, as the name suggests, you can have a parent-child relationship with issues, and you can even go as deep as you want. This update also brings some other features. Let's give them a look. To begin with, you will notice that when you click New Issue, a model will appear. And here, if you have some templates, you can obviously pick them, or also you can create a blank issue. Let's do that for now. From here, the bigger change you might see, other than this slightly improved editor, is that you have now a dropdown under Type. And this is one of the other major features I was talking about. Issue types. And you may wonder, what is the difference with the already existing labels? The thing is that issue types are instead organization-wide, so the entire organization will share the exact same issue types, so that you can keep types for more general things, but still keep some project-related labels. As I mentioned, here the default types are bug enhancement or task, but we can obviously create more. And we can do that from the organization settings. Let me show you in a second. So from here, you will find planning and issue types. These are the three default ones, and you can create a new one. For example, Epic. I can give them a purple color. Does that remind you of something? Anyway, I can create the new issue type. That will be Epic. Uh, I could also add a description. And OK, much better now. And now the changes are saved. If I go back to my issue, I can now find Epic here in the type list. Let's add a title and hit Create. But before doing that, you might also notice that there's this Create More checkbox. and Unsurprisingly, if you tick it when you create your issue, issue 8 has been created, and you can now create a new one. But for now, I want to inspect the issue I just created. I can click here. We say that this was an epic, so we're expecting to have some sub-issues. I can either create a new one or add an existing issue. Let's begin by creating a new sub-issue. And here in this new model, you notice that again, I have the same two templates I had for this repository, but also I can change repository. And I will do that in a moment. Let's create first a new bug report. This is the issue template I have set up for this project. So all the fields defined in my template are shown here. So I can create new bug. And again, I can set the issue type is bug. I can create this one. Something you can notice here is that the issue type is shown, but the labels are not. And this might be useful in case you have a lot of labels and you might not want to see all of them here in this preview. But let's go back and try the other feature that is creating a sub-issue on another repository. For example, here I have access on all the repository of my organization. And if I select a different repo, as expected, you will find that repository templates to show up here. Because in fact, I am creating an issue on the other repository. And you can see that with this feature template. Let's again create a new one real quick and again click the create button. You notice that the issue I created before was issue number 9 because it is scoped on this repository. But this new one is issue number 33 because, well, this issue is on the other repository. And this might actually be a feedback for the GitHub team. Uh, maybe here we should display somewhere that this issue is from a different repository. Back to our main task, if I want to create a sub-issue of another sub-issue, I can just open this one here and it opens in this kind of side panel. And look at that, there's again the create sub issue button. So it's really fast. I can create a sub issue and hit enter and that's it. But after creating so many issues, you might want to have a smart way to search through issues. And this is yet another improvement we're getting with this update. You can immediately notice it by hitting the spacebar with a new dropdown appearing here, which as you can see, it's basically a smart search helping you fill in all the details here. The filters are pretty much the same you already know, but in this case, it is way easier to build the query for the filters. Here, you can redefine some of the filters you may apply or also exclude. But for example, if you start typing, I press the other S, you can see that I've got even more filters I can use. For example, the state, I can only want open issues. Also easily sorting, well, this one was already here, but you can also do that here from the string for most commented. Don't have many comments here. Yeah, the sort is also applied here. You can obviously filter by issue type. I want only bugs here, and it will display type bug. And I think this really helps you making better queries because for example, yesterday I noticed that if you want to exclude something, you can use exclude here. For example, I want to remove the documentation label and the syntax was this minus character here, which didn't know. I found that by using this helpful query builder. The bad news is that all of that is behind the feature flag. But the good news is that, as I can see here from this discussion, if you want your organization to have access to the feature, you can just 
ask and as I can see it will be enabled. This is the right place if you want to share feedback about issue types. There's also a discussion for sub issues, again for sharing feedback, reporting bugs about the beta of sub issues. But in any case, I leave both links in the description to make it easier for you to just click the link, request beta and share feedback. In the meantime, while waiting for the feature flag to be activated on your organization, you might wonder how does it take to create this kind of forms to create new issues with text areas, drop downs, you have checkboxes and many more controls. And the answer is that there is a special syntax you can use to create this kind of forms. And I talked about it in a video, I think last year, but the topic is still relevant. The syntax is still the same. So in case you want to have a look, I'll leave it here floating around somewhere on the screen. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye.